So welcome everyone to another Sunday Zoom meeting. We had a week off last week and so we're back to it this week and we have been working our way through uh, the Miracle Principles, uh, the last two meetings, and we've gotten up as far as Miracle Principle number 10 is where we're going to start this week. So without further ado, let's have a chat about these principles and the same as we did last week. I think we'll have We'll talk about the miracle principle and then we'll open it up for any questions anyone might like to ask about that miracle principle before we move on to the next one. And I would just ask that you keep the questions at this point um, related to the miracle principle we're covering. We'll leave some time at the end for just some general sharing and some questions. All right. So miracle principle number 10. The use of miracles as spectacles to induce belief is a misunderstanding of their purpose. So um, I guess on one level, this is making, uh, this is one of the places where Jesus kind of talks about miracles, where it seems like what it is you do uh, rather than a change of your mind. But if we were to understand this, what it's really saying, it's, it's about being vigilant that our ego our separate self, the voice in our head, doesn't hijack the process. That's what's being talked about here. Um, it, it, our, our separate self, our voice in the head, uh, will very easily misappropriate the miracle for its own self-aggrandizing purpose rather than the Holy Spirit's purpose. Um, always our ego, uh, it wants to look on a problem, make it real, and then be the one that fixes it. So that way it can look to others and to itself as a good and holy spiritualized ego. Um, healing to separate, as the Song of Prayer would, would actually uh, deem that. Um, so I guess at best, um, with what this miracle principle is talking about, is how the ego will want to fix the world or save the world. Um, and the course very specifically tells us, seek not to change the world, <laughs> seek to change your mind about the world. Um, it's also important to remember that the sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself. Um, and that correction is not ours. Correction is the Holy Spirit. Our job is to choose the miracle and to allow the miracle to extend through us. But the way it extends and what it does, um, that's none of our business. That's the Holy Spirit's um, job, it's not ours. Um, so let's see, if we talk about this miracle principle, miracle principle number 10, uh, what a real miracle is, is that I notice myself making error real. Or I notice myself projecting my guilt onto you. And the miracle is a change of mind. It's a change of perspective from the ego's perspective. Now, that means it is a change away from the perspective of the insane voice in my head talking to itself. I disregard that. And I fall back to the Holy Spirit's perspective. And when I let go of the ego's hand, I'm with the Holy Spirit. I'm no longer identifying with the insane voice talking to itself in my mind. I slip back into that which is aware of the insane voice talking to itself in my mind. It's a bit like I come out of the movie and I'm in the theater with Jesus. And the insane voice talking to itself is on the screen. So I'm not my thoughts and feelings. I am that which is non-judgmentally aware of thoughts and feelings with Jesus. So my wrong mind is the insane voice talking to itself and everything it thinks, which is wrong. And my right mind is that which is aware of it without judging it. So that's my two selves, my wrong mind and my right mind. And what we are is a decision-making mind. We are consciousness. And we can be wrong-minded consciousness or we can be right-minded consciousness. And that's what our metaphor of being in the cinema with Jesus is all about or being above the battleground with Jesus. 
um, you know, bodies are on the battleground. Being above the battleground means disengaging from the body, from the physical and the psychological body, and joining with the Holy Spirit. And when I'm joined with the Holy Spirit, I know what I am above the battleground, you are above the battleground. We are one in Christ. We share the same being. And at this level, bodies don't matter. <laughs> so if we were talking about, let's talk about someone who's sick. Um, the ego will try and hijack the miracle process by going, oh, here's a brother who's sick. I'm going to heal that brother. And that is healing to separate. I have made the error real. I have attacked the Christ in myself to perceive myself as a body. And I am now attacking you, the Christ in you, to perceive you as a body, which is going to serve my ego's needs by allowing me to be the holy one. So that's what the ego will do. It will make the error real. It will feel sorry for you. It will say to your mind, you're right, you are a body, and you are sick. And I being the holy one, the learned one, <laughs> the better one, <laughs> I'm going to cure all your troubles in your body. But there's no problems in the body. Of course, in miracles is understanding the only place there's a problem is in the mind, not in the body. The only place there's a problem is in my mind. So if I'm seeing a brother is sick, I'm the one who's sick. Because it means I'm not identified as a mind. I'm identified as a body and an insane voice talking to itself. And I'm making you the same thing. So I've attacked Christ <laughs> by being a body. And I'm attacking Christ a second time by seeing Christ as your body. But as the Course tells us, he who knows he has Christ inside of him sees Christ everywhere except in bodies. So there's only Christ, but there are images we have made of sickness and victimhood and attack and death. And they're playing over the light of Christ. And the miracle looks on devastation and reminds the mind that what it sees is false. Christ isn't a body. There may be an image of a body playing in front of the light of Christ, uh, which I've put there uh, to make the Holy Spirit wrong about what Christ is and make me right. And with the miracle, I look on devastation. I am reminded that it's false. Christ isn't a body. Awareness of dreaming is the real function of God's teachers. So I don't make the body real. I don't have to deny that I see a body. I don't have to go around going, no, 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 I don't see bodies. Um, I deny the ego's purpose for the body, which is to make separate and make different. So again, the miracle looks on devastation. It doesn't pretend it's not there. But it reminds the mind that what it sees is false. So really in the miracle, I fall back. And remember, I'm not this body or this insane voice talking to itself in my mind. I am the stillness, the silence, the quiet, aware of, of the noise, the movement, and the form. So I go to that place in my mind that thought of perfect love symbolized by Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And I identify with that. And as I identify with that, I know what I am, you are. And neither of us is a body. There's one Christ. And we all have the same shared purpose of awakening from the dream of death, awakening from the dream of bodies and insane voices talking to each other to themselves we share the same need of remembering we are the one christ we share the same 
champion. So really with miracles and with um, healing, it's about understand there has to be the perfect equality of giver and receiver. As Jesus says in the course, make this year different by making everything the same. You know, we're, we're all the same Christ and we all have the same shared purpose of awakening from the insane voice talking to itself in our mind and knowing ourselves as Christ. And there's just one. So that is what I want to say on miracle principle number 10. So in other words, if I have any desire to see your body healed as a result of what I do, I'm still sick. I'm still identifying as a body and I'm still attacking the Christ in you to see you as a body and then wanting to see the body because I'm saying the problem is out there. <laughs> Even more, I'm saying the problem is in you and it's not. The problem is in me. I'm the one that's making the separation real. I'm the one that's making bodies real. My job is to see that you are not a body. And I guess it's really, really, really important to, to understand. It might seem like if you do that, that you would be somehow more cold or um, less um, sympathetic. Or And that's not true. Um, actually, it will make you much more effectively um, caring and empathetic. Because when I get my own lies that I'm believing out of my mind, that Christ is a body. Um, when I get that out of my mind and I find that stillness and that quiet and that love of the Holy Spirit, now that love can express itself through me in the most effective way and the most loving way that is helpful to everyone concerned with a situation. And it's nothing to do with me. I'm not doing it. The separate, you know, the, the insane voice talking to itself in my mind has nothing to do with what happens next. Whatever happens next will happen through me. And that might be something I say, or it might be nothing I say, and it might be something I do, and it might be nothing I do. But the very fact that I have found that place of stillness and silence and peace, and I'm not making illusions real, I'm not making nightmares real, I'm not making the images real, and, and I have that stillness and silence in my mind, and I know what I am, you are, your mind has to be healed. It has to be healed. Um, and what that looks like or how that's accomplished is the Holy Spirit's job. It's got nothing to do with me. You know, you're perfectly entitled to refuse that healing uh, in the moment. Um, and again, if I'm looking for changes in you, I, I, I'm back to, you know, wanting the miracle to be a spectacle that convinces me that the miracle is real. So I'm not looking for anything to happen with a miracle, except that I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to stop believing the lies, the insane voice talking to itself in my mind is telling me. And I'm gonna to listen to the Holy Spirit telling me that I'm not a body and I'm not the insane voice talking to itself. I am the peace, the stillness and the love in my mind and what I am my brother is. And what happens after that is the Holy Spirit's job. Nothing to do with me. As soon as I get into trying to convince you of something, I'm, I'm back. To my mind is sick again. And as soon as I'm looking for a change to have happened uh, with a body or a voice talking to itself in the mind, I'm back looking for a spectacle that will convince me. So really, the, the principle of this miracle is that the only person who needs to be healed is me, the beholder. I'm the one making the images of sickness and death and suffering that we made to deny the Holy Spirit, to call him a liar and go, no, we're right and you're wrong. I'm the one making them real. I'm the one feeling bad about them. The only person that needs to be healed is me. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, We'll throw that open for anyone who'd like to ask questions on miracle principle number 10. Do we have any hands, Eli? Sorry, yes. Um, 
Marcia had her hand up for a while there, and so she, I think she should be able to go first. Go ahead, Marcia. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Marcia. Unmute yourself. I think you need to unmute, Marcia. Unmute. <laughs> there Am I unmuted? <laughs> um, okay. So I I. I understand what what you're saying, but I have a question and I just, I know you can clarify it. Okay, so for me, this body, it's been sick for a while. And um, even, even my husband, you know, we've had our aches and pains and operations and all that stuff. So we've got friends who are always calling and saying, oh, how are you? I have one friend that's praying to St. Jude for me, I mean, so I guess the answer to this is just, I see them through the, through the Christ in me. Um, they don't know what the miracle is. They think that the miracle would be the healing of my body. And, mm -hmm. and but it just seems like everywhere I turn, I'm talking on the phone to a friend. Oh, I've got this pain. I've got that pain. She's, you know, reiterating her pain. It, it's all about our sickness and our pain. Yeah, we love it. I know. And I, I do too. <laughs> I, I know that. We, every, we all do. Absolutely. Uh, we love it. We Absolutely. love it. <laughs> so how can I kind of, I don't know, not bypass it, but... I guess it's just, a, it's a silly question, but. It's not. It's and just, the answer is, the answer is quite simple. And um, the sole right, responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself. Right. It is not our job um, to accept the atonement on anyone else's behalf. It is on our own behalf. You know, we're not trying to cure other people by making no. them accept the atonement. We're going to accept our own atonement, which says nobody needs healing except me, because I think they do. Does that make sense? Yes. So I just say thank you. You know, when yeah. my friend says, how do you feel today? I prayed to St. Jude for you last night. Well, I still feel like crap. Your, your miracle didn't work. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, All right. Look, I just um, say thank you. Right. I yes. just say thank you. And absolutely. Because it's, it, it's look at it's the way they are expressing love in the way that they know how. Yes. So it, right. th that's how right. we exactly. shift our perception to something okay. healthier there in that right. situation. Because what you don't want to do is to slip into judging them. Because then, of course, no. you know, <laughs> I know it goes sideways. Yeah. Oh, and plus, you're making uh, it real. Plus, you're making oh, it real. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. I'm making so it's it always, so real. Yeah, so the real I just keep watching me wanting to be the sick, pain-ridden person. Yeah. And, and know and that it has you, nothing to do with the love and yeah. peace of Jesus. And the you that's watching Marcia wanting to be the sick person without judging her, you know, that's just noticing Marcia um identifying with sickness, um, that you isn't sick. Yeah. So you've two selves. So you yeah, have yeah, the yeah. one that will glorify in it. Yes. And you have the other one that's you in the cinema with Jesus or above the battleground that's looking at you, glorifying in it and forgiving you for it. Now your two selves are present, the one that's sick and the one that's not. And yeah. so all, yeah. all you're ever doing is bringing your wrong mind to your right mind. You're bringing the darkness to the light and let the light do its job. If you do that, if you're just awake in your mind with Jesus, looking at yourself and how much you want to identify as a body and a voice talking to itself and forgiving yourself for it. If you do that, at some point in time, your allegiance is going to shift from what you're looking at over to what is looking. Yeah, and that's the that's holy instant. I'm yeah, and I'm hoping for that, but I still feel like I'm trying too hard. You know, no, I no, yes, no, you are. Over. No, you see, if you're trying at all, um, you're on the wrong track because you're listening to the ego, um, because um, only the ego tries. Uh, you no. see, the thing is, the insane voice in your head can't choose against itself. 
So Marsha can't choose not to be Marsha. The ego can't choose not to be the ego. That's why the final step of the forgiveness process is the Holy Spirit's because, you know, Keith can't choose not to be Keith. The only thing I can do is step back and be the noticer of Keith with no judgments of him, with infinite patience. Forgiveness looks and waits and judges not. And once I step into that space, now there's a non-ego presence in my mind. Um, but uh, but but the, the the separate self, the voice in my head, that that can't choose the miracle. That can't forgive. That can't um, you know choose against itself. The only thing you can do is bring your wrong mind to your right mind. And the instant that you're looking at Marsha without judging her or being her, um, your right mind is present with your wrong mind, and that's all you do. You bring your two minds together. And everything else takes care of itself because they, they can't coexist. <laughs> the darkness can't coexist with the light. And, and so it's just a huge block that I'm putting up to Jesus saying, I'm not ready yet. Yeah, look, the thing to bear in mind is that if there was no voice in your head, there would be no pain or suffering. Yeah. Okay, so our ego manifests as the voice in our head that we identify with the separate self um if there was no separate self then there's no pain um now we're we're not asked to delete our ego or fight our ego or anything of the sort jesus says let me look at it with you you know and and to let him look at you you have to join your perception to his so you have to become non-judgmental so the only way you can be with jesus is to look at your ego and your decision to be an ego your decision to be a body your decision that says i want to be the insane voice in my head i want to be my story i want to be the person that was born in this year and had this family and is married to this person i want this so our decision for the ego is made okay and all jesus says is let me look at it for you with mm -hmm. you and that means we look at it with no judgment of it whatsoever. Um, and at some point, if we're doing this non-judgmental looking at our decision for the ego, um, we'll, we'll undo that decision to be the voice in our head and to be the body. Uh, and it will be automatic because the insane voice can't choose it. It will be automatic. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So, does that so make I'm sense? Just, it does. It makes complete sense. It's Good. just that you say at some point, and and like I'm thinking, well, why not now? Because I keep giving it all. Because you don't you you don't want to stop being the voice in your head yet. Yeah. Okay. Right. And and Jesus Jesus right. can't make you choose, and the Holy I Spirit know. can't make you choose, and God can't make you choose, uh, and the chorus can't make you choose. <laughs> I think. See, I think I'm choosing. That's the choosing, problem. Choosing Jesus. against being Marsha. Yeah. Really. I, I, well, then, I'm willing. That, that, I'm very but, willing. But, I don't but, like being Marsha anymore. But, but then, no, but, no, but you see, if you're willing, then mm -hmm. there is nothing but a peace in your mind. There's no commentary going on. There's no conversations with yourself. Yeah. You know. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, Thank so, you very much. So really, listen, and we'll we'll get to this as we go through the, the, the miracle principles today. But when we're practicing the course properly, every minute of the day. We're noticing, oh, look, I think I'm the insane voice in my head again. Let me go back to the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. Right. Every right. minute. Every, every minute. minute. Absolutely. I'm, now, we're I'm not going to do there. that. <laughs> we're not going to well, do that every minute. But we got to well, work towards this. Because, a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. I do it But a basically, lot. every time, every time we go off in our head, we have thrown the Holy Spirit out and went, I don't want, I don't want love. I want to be a me. I want to be a voice mm -hmm. talking in my head and I want to be a body. And I don't want the Holy Spirit. So, so you know, we can say we want it. That's why Jesus says in the course, you know, I want the peace of God. To say these words is nothing, yeah. but to mean these words is everything. Because if I mean these words, I am choosing against the story of me to be a pure, non-judgmental awareness in the present moment. Yeah, which can't suffer. Yeah. But, you know, it's a process, you know, it's a it ladder, sure is. you know, <laughs> and remember know. only Jesus says only infinite patience produces immediate effects, only, only infinite patience. So the minute we're going, why hasn't it happened? Well, it hasn't happened because you're not patient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
right already. <laughs> infinite patience. He chooses immediate Thank effects. You. Thanks, Marsha. Thanks. Where should we go next? Do you like? And you have your hand up. You can unmute yourself now if you'd like. Go for it, Anne. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, Keith. Um, well, you had to bring up the whole illness thing. Okay. <laughs> so what, oh, okay. what, I, what I'm not quite clear on is like, if someone comes to me for help, like, like if a young girl comes to me, um, I just been so depressed and all that. So where I need to go in my mind is that she's not that like, um, how do I say this? Uh, this is what I'm bringing, or is that her video that she plays? Um, I can't help her. I need to just get centered in Jesus or Holy Spirit. And then whatever comes out is coming from there instead of me thinking, oh my God, this poor thing, you know, yeah. she's so depressed, right? Yes. So I yeah, want, because... and that's making it real. It is. And, and... It is. Okay. And it's making it real for her. And remember what you teach, you learn. So you're saying to her, yes, you're a body. Yes, you're sick. God love you. It's terrible. Um, and, and you're also learning the same thing of yourself. Okay. okay. So, so the course is saying everything your mind is telling you is wrong. The insane voice talking to itself in your mind, it thinks it's a body. It thinks it was born. It thinks it's male or female. It thinks it's in the world. None of that's true. Okay. So no, nothing the insane voice talking to itself in your mind says is true. Um, and, and, and it's absolutely useless at helping anyone. And in fact, it doesn't even want to help anyone. It only wants to help other people to alleviate its own guilt. Because it believes that I believe I'm an awful person. Um, but if I can be truly helpful to another person and make their illness real and may, and now I will feel like I'm a good person and that I have value and I have worth. Well, guess what? My worth is established by God, not by the crazy antics my ego wants to engage in, in the world that we made to attack God. <laughs> so uh, the first thing exactly we've got to do. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's all just ego and it's useless. Everything I do will be polluted by, by ego and separate interests. And then if they don't respond the way I want them to respond, I'm going to hate them. And then I mightn't be prepared to look at that. So I'll kind of repress that thought and it's going to come out in a different way. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what the course is saying is um, what you want to do is you want to get back to the love in your mind. Um, and if you do that, love will express itself through you in the most loving and helpful way for everyone concerned with the situation. But that means I've got to understand everything my mind is telling me is crap. All the voices are lies. All the analysis are lies. Um, and, and we also need to understand that, you know, there is just expressions of love and calls for love. So, I mean, depression is just a call for love. And our job is to answer the call for love with love. But we can't do that as long as we're listening to the insane voice talking to itself in our, in our mind and as long as we're making illusions real. Um, so we've got to step back from being the insane and the insane voice talking to itself in a body. And then in that experience of myself as spirit, not a physical body or a psychological body, but as this still alert presence, then I know you are this still in our presence also because we share our being. There's just one Christ. And then what I do is I hold that as my truth. And, and, then, um, and then I do whatever feels like the right thing to do in the moment with trust. That's loving. But it's not based on me trying to be a holy ego and prove to myself that I have worth, even though I secretly believe I'm worthless because I think I'm an ego. That's what we need to get out of the way. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's also to understand that, you know, our brother isn't depressed. The ego is depressed. And a brother is temporarily identifying with the ego. Mm. OK, so the only reason anyone is depressed is because they think they're the insane voice talking to itself in their mind and the story of who they are. And that's the only reason anyone is angry. Uh, like, you know, Christ has never been angry. 
Christ has never been guilty. Christ has never been uh, depressed or anxious. Uh, the ego is those things. And the only mistake God's son is making is to identify as the ego. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm seeing my brother not as an ego. Right, right. Um, yeah. and, but I, and again, my motivation for doing that isn't my brother. It's because I'm sick, because I'm making egos real. My mind is sick. I'm wrong-minded because I'm saying the ego is real. The separation from God is real. I am a body and an insane voice talking to itself. My brother is a body and an insane voice talking to himself. And the problem is in bodies. It's not in my mind. And I have to fix my perception. Now, the bonus of that is that when I fix my perception, that shines into my brother's mind also. Mm. Mm, good. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So I, I the, 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 the balancing act here, really, is that on the one hand, I have to know there's no problem here because Christ's not a body. Okay. On the one hand, I have to know that even as I'm ministering to a body in a way that's loving and compassionate. Yes. Yes. But yeah. That's I'm what not I'm making finding. The error real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm not yeah. making the error real because if there's any, if I feel any discomfort about the situation in your life, I'm the one who's sick. That discomfort is purely for me to remove, to forgive, to let go of. And um, so I get back to knowing only love is real. Yeah, that's good. And it doesn't and matter what's excellent. happening yeah. with bodies. Yeah, it doesn't matter what's happening yeah. with bodies. Yeah. And if I know only love is real, I will act in a way that reflects that truth and contributes towards the knowledge of that truth for everyone at the level of form of the body. Yeah. Yeah. All, all my actions will reflect the truth that only love is real. Yeah. It's interesting to watch it because it'll be like, I'll get, I'll go back and forth, you know, I'll go, okay, that's not true. She's not really the body and then she'll say something else and I go oh that's really oh no okay back again yeah. <laughs> you know, not the body. Yeah. I keep you know you get sucked in oh my god that's horrible that ha oh yeah. no wait a minute <laughs> yeah so it's just kind yeah. of that practice okay. it's like I, I think what was this do, I, do you work as a therapist is it well I'm in 12-step recovery so I sponsor oh, a lot of okay. girls yes okay right I think I think what I think it was Carol Rogers said that it's essential for any therapist to have an unconditionally high regard for their patient unconditionally high regard it means it doesn't matter what they confess mm -hmm. doesn't matter what they say doesn't matter what they believe about themselves that the therapist it's essential that he would have an unconditionally um high regard for his patient um, like and, and really that's sort of, you know, that's, that's on the same track as what we're saying with miracle mindedness, which is that I know you're Christ because I've fallen back from believing I'm a body or the insane voice in my head. And now I'm not making you a body or the insane voice in your head. I feel what we both are. I feel it. Okay. And I sit and I feel what we both are, even as I communicate lovingly with you on the level of forms, that's really what we're doing, but I don't lose that mm -hmm. feeling of what we both are. Neither of us are a physical or a psychological body. And what we are is one in Christ. Good. Yeah. Good. Very helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. Um, Thank where you. should we go next, Eli? Adrian. Adrian? Adrian? Not, I feel like I'm not saying your name right. <laughs> you can correct me. Go for it, me. Adrian. <laughs> Adrian. Yeah, there we go. Go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my kind of question is around um, around that kind of thing of like I from reading Gary Renard's books and Disappearance of the Universe and that the one of the art and person one of them mentions at some point a kind of a quick forgiveness practice was just to see people as whole and innocent and mm -hmm. uh, just you know say I see you as whole and innocent and we were both forgiven and released kind of in your mind or whatever. So I would do that a lot with my my ex-wife and, you know, I would find if there's any tension between us, I would get anxious. And then when I get anxious, I get reactive and, you know, I'm making the whole thing real and all that. Like, but when I'm trying to kind of work that forgiveness in whatever way I, I can at the time, I'm finding lately that we're getting on very well. 
-hmm. and I'm slipping into that kind of and I've heard it said before that we shouldn't have any expectations about how the relationship may or may not change but it is changing for the better and yeah. I'm kind of I find myself going into oh this is great now I'll, I'll keep working this and but that's probably making it real as well in, in another way, is it, from the other side? I, like I think I think the great irony is that the minute we don't need the situation to change, it does. Yeah. But as yeah. long as we're trying to change the situation, it doesn't. Yeah. I think that's what, what's, I think that's actually what's happening, yeah. And when yeah, I'm... Because I'm, any investment in the situation changes is an ego, an ego investment. So yeah. as long as that's present, then nothing changes. Um, but as long as, but but what if we? Because look, I mean, all the ego does is resist reality. That's all the ego is. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, Keith is just the ego resisting reality in one way, and Adrian's just the the ego resisting reality in another way. Um, and so, really, um, we let go of resistance. We let go of saying the problem is in the world. We let go of saying, I'm anxious because my wife is acting like an asshole. That's not true, okay? Um, you're anxious because you have chosen to be an ego uh, instead of Christ, and you are now projecting on that onto your wife and going, you did this to me. So that's all that's going on. Uh, the problem's never in the world. It's never in the body. It's always in the mind, and it's just about understanding that. And so in any you know situation, if I'm feeling tense or anxious or angry or anything like that, um, I have to understand that the cause of that is not the world. It's not somebody else. The cause of that is that I've chosen to throw the Holy Spirit out of my mind and be an insane voice talking to itself on my own. Um, and the guilt of separateness is enormous, and I can't cope with it, and I do repress it and I split it off and now I project it onto someone who's not behaving in in accordance with the role I've assigned them in my fantasy life separate from God <laughs> and if they're not I'll go you did this to me I could be a perfectly happy insane voice talking to itself if you hadn't done this mm. yeah so so again it's always just understanding that the cause is never in the world uh what I'm feeling is never the result of anything anyone is doing the uh, the Course says, well, I have one problem, which is the decision to be separate from the Holy Spirit in my mind. Uh, and there's one answer to everything, which is to undo that mistaken decision to be a body and an insane voice talking to itself and to rejoin with the Holy Spirit as a non-judgmental observer, as a still alert presence. And the way I do that is by looking at how much I want to be the ego without judging myself. And now that still alert presence is there. Mm -hmm. my two selves are present my right mind is looking at my wrong mind without judging it now both my minds are present well that's all you do that's all you do <laughs> and so you look a, at yourself you don't yeah. like, in that pro in that kind of forgiveness process you're talking about there do you need to this might seem like a really stupid thing to say now but do you need to say holy spirit jesus come in and just help me with that last bit of forgiveness there because i've done my bit now or do you not, not need to even worry about that? Like, No, you want to feel your right-minded presence, which is not the insane voice talking to itself. And you want to notice your investment and in still wanting to be the insane voice talking to itself. Um, so so in, in, in now that might be something we have to work up to. But again, use the, the being in the cinema with Jesus or being above the battleground with Jesus to really drill into your mind. You have two minds. You have a split mind. Uh, one of them will never be peaceful. <laughs> and the other one is always peaceful. And they're always present together. They are always present concurrently. Right. They're just split off from one, one another. And what we want to do is un, undo that splitting off. What we want to do is fall back and be the. The, the peaceful mind observing the non-peaceful mind. He's so, just a... <laughs> um, well, no, that's the easiest thing in the world to do. What makes it seem difficult is that we keep saying, um, oh, I should be doing something. <laughs> um, what do I do next? What's my forgiveness for? That's what messes the whole thing up. And then we think we're failures and I'm failing the course because we think we're supposed to be choosing the Holy Spirit and choosing against the ego. That is not what the course is teaching you to do. The course formula is you look at the fact that you are choosing the ego and you forgive yourself for it. Okay. Now, the you that's forgiving the ego is present in your mind. That changes everything. Whatever guilt's coming up, its days are numbers. <laughs> All right. At some point, you're going to stop misidentifying as the voice in your head and identify as the part of you that's with Jesus.
And the minute you do that, whatever guilt was present vanishes as the illusion it was. The only purpose that your anxiety and guilt and anger has is to protect Adrian from the light. Because I think the mistake I'm making is I, I, I'm i falling into that trap of thinking I have to be complete in a completely almost... Yeah, totally no, no, state. that's the ego's or, Jedi mind trick that makes this seem like it's something really difficult. It's not. Um, yeah. It's... it's you know, it's like therapists would say that if someone has anxiety, the thing that keeps the anxiety going is their defenses against it. You know, everything they're doing to protect themselves from their anxiety is what fuels it. And in the same way, um, all, you, all, all you're meant to do is non-judgmentally observe that you are choosing the ego without judging yourself. And then there's two selves. There's the you that's looking and the you know because at any given moment if i'm anxious i can notice that the awareness of anxiety isn't anxious mm. you know most times i'm identified with the insane voice talking to itself in my mind and i'm identified with the anxiety but at any given moment i can i can choose to be the awareness now now i'm actually awake in my mind which like i say when we start with the course we're not we're going around just completely identified with this ego recording in our mind going i am this i am making choices i am angry I'm no we're not that's just the ego that's a voice in your head and it's not you you're just identified with it instead of realizing that you're the awareness of it so all we ever have to do is become aware of thinking happening instead of being lost in the thoughts and unconscious in it and the minute we do that then there's now our right mind is present because the right mind is a non-judgmental observer of the ego because like i i don't I guess I had a difficult day, and at one point I, I kind of was able to step back, and mm -hmm. observe it, and it was like peace came in straight away. Like yeah, beautiful. straight away, straight away. If if you're ready to let go of the ego's hand and just simply identify so with it the peace, about, it lasted about a minute. Like and then <laughs> it's a process. That's all that we it's need to do. Yeah, yeah, but but again, you know, even with that, it's it's about. Um, it's always just about being awake in your mind with Jesus so your right mind's present instead of just being wrong-minded. Mm -hmm. Our one problem is that we've thrown the Holy Spirit out of our mind. It's the last thing in our minds. And instead, we're identified with this movie script that's going on in our head and going, I am this. Um, and, and all we're ever asked to do is to step back and look at the script going on in your head, which is insane. Um, and look at the fact that you're choosing to identify with it when you don't have to. You could just go, I don't know what anything is for. So everything the voice in my head is saying is lies. And I can, I can, I can, I can see peace instead of this. But, but the trick is that the course formula is that you look at how much you don't want to let go of being the insane voice talking to itself in your mind. You don't want to let go of being a separate self. It's to look at it and not judge yourself for it. But when I feel good, I get I get the nice thoughts. That's when I'm in trouble because that's what I find hard to let go of. Mm. You know, well, so. you know, let, let, let's start with the unpleasant one first of all. <laughs> we can work up to everything else. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, no problem. Thanks, Adrian. Um, where else shall we go to, Eli? We have uh, Lael. You have your hand up. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Thanks. Hi. Um, Hi Hi, Keith. Um, uh, hi, Eli. Thank you both. Um, I just wondered if you could say more about, I think you were quoting the text that you are uh, discussing, and it said something like, we can see Christ in everything that isn't a body. And could you say more about seeing things that aren't bodies? I mean, obviously, it must be metaphorical sight, but what what is that referring to? Do you, do you know what um, I'm what I'm alluding yeah, to? Because yeah, I didn't write I do. down the exact language. Yeah. Um, let's find the actual quote because I paraphrase slightly, and I can tell you where it is. Um, bear with me one moment. Hmm. 
Okay, so it's from the introduction to chapter 25, paragraph two. Um, and what it says is, uh, no one who carries Christ in him can fail to recognize him everywhere, except in bodies. So that's the so, answer. Yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, thank you. I guess my question is, what, 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 okay, so it said recognize, not see. I'm just, um, <laughs> uh i i live amidst bodies i'm just trying I, is there do you have anything to say to elaborate on yeah is it just, is it just well, it's obviously not seeing auras uh it's just overlooking um the physical world but there's still a recognition i, I don't know why i, I just was curious to yeah. understand that let me take out a quote here Christ's vision. Now, you do not have Christ's vision with your eyes. Your eyes will always show you bodies. Okay. Um, so Christ's vision has one law. It does not look upon a body and mistake it for the son whom God created. It beholds a light beyond the body, an idea beyond what can be touched, a purity undimmed by errors, pitiful mistakes, and fearful thoughts of guilt from dreams of sin. It sees no separation, and it looks on everyone, on every circumstance, all happenings and all events without the slightest fading of the light it sees. Now, that does not mean your eyes will stop seeing sick people and healthy people and young people and old people. Um, but Christ's vision knows that's a dream. Okay, so your eyes were made to lie. Jesus tells us in the course that the eyes don't see, the ears don't hear, and the brain doesn't think. It's a program. It's a script that was programmed in to play that would make it look like Christ is a body and that attack is real and that sickness and death is real. So that's the purpose of everything your eyes show you. And it doesn't matter, you know, Jesus from the cross still looked out and saw young bodies and old bodies and sick bodies and healthy bodies and cruel bodies and upset bodies. Um, but he didn't, he, he wasn't deceived by it. Um, let's go to another quote. Awareness of dreaming is the real function of God's teachers. They watch the dream figures come and go, shift and change, suffer and die, yet they are not deceived by what they see. They recognize that to behold a dream figure as sick and separate is no more real than to regard it as healthy and beautiful. Unity alone is not a thing of dreams, and it is this God's teachers acknowledge as behind the dream, beyond all seeming, and yet surely theirs. Again, ordinarily I will have attacked Christ to perceive myself as a body and not Christ, and once I've done that, I will attack Christ a second time to see you as a body and make the body real. Um, and the miracle is where I undo that attack. I think so, I kind of, well, the sorry, trick is, I just interrupted you. The first here. thing mm -hmm. I have to see, I, I can't see you as, you know, um, a light beyond the body, an idea that can't yeah, be touched. That, I, I can't do that. I can't do that as a body. I can't <laughs> do that as a physical body. And I can't do that as a psychological body because I'm, I'm already in the ego's world. So I have to let go of identifying as a body and an insane voice talking to itself. And if I've done that, um, I will feel my identity as not the insane voice talking to itself. And so again, I'm slipping into identifying as what's in the cinema with Jesus. 
I, I'm slipping into the identity of awareness. In other words, I'm understanding I am not my thoughts and my feelings and my body. I am the awareness in behind it. I can. Can you hear me, Keith? Yeah. Um, a, a thought came to me in response to my question while you were speaking. So I would be the epitome of bad listening over here. But the thought that came to me was um, that since we are a thought in the mind of God, and everything is purely abstract then i mean obviously it's not bodily sight but that would explain i mean i don't know what the language purity and light is supposed to suggest i mean i guess not purity, a body I not a body. yeah not a, not a body so okay not an ego not, not what the body is ego. doing and not what the ego right. is doing right so anyway if i think of it as thought then um then that that i can okay that's something i can grasp it's an encounter with pure thought in uh something involving a mind and only mind which is completely uh without form um, I, I wouldn't complicate it that way i i think you're trying to mix different levels of reality there what you want to understand is that <laughs> The only, what you need to understand is that you're not lael right lael is a little separated self um, you think you're Lael, that doesn't make it true, right? What you are is consciousness that can misidentify with a, a figure in the movie and then think it's Lael, but it doesn't make it true. It just means you're deluded into thinking you're in the movie, but you're not. Okay, so that's a wrong mind. So as a decision maker, you can continue to choose to identify with a voice in your head and a body, or at any given moment, you can choose not to. And the way you do that is by looking at the insane voice talking to itself and the body without judging it. Now, your right mind is present, and there's a choice to make. And you forgive yourself for still wanting to be the insane voice talking to itself and the body until you don't want it anymore. And that might be five minutes or five hours or five days. Um... You know, and it doesn't mean that you have completely undone your ego investment. It just means on this issue, I identify as Christ. I do not identify as an insane voice talking to itself, making the past real. So the decision maker joined with the Holy Spirit is a non-judgmental observer. It's the absence of judgment. Okay, so that's what it is. Um, so what I am is a pure non-judgmental awareness. And when I experience that in me, I know that's what you are as well. We are the same. So Thank the, the you, way Keith. I, yeah. So mm -hmm. the way I, the way I find this, this, because, you know, this is a process because we spent our whole lives thinking we are the insane voice talking to itself in our mind. And then the course comes along and goes, all your problems are because you think you are the insane voice talking to itself in your mind. And the minute you choose against it, love rushes in to meet you when you discover your true identity. But we're all terrified of not being the insane voice talking to itself in our minds. <laughs> okay. Um, so the, the resistance to this is massive. Uh, massive. And so we just take it one little situation at a time, one forgiveness opportunity at a time. We go, in this situation, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say and mean that I don't know what anything is for. The voice in my head is full of crap. It thinks it's a body. The Course says, I'm not a body. But if I listen to the voice in my head, I'm a body. In this instance, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to let all that go. And the minute I do that, I experience myself as a non-judgmental awareness. And there's no guilt in that. There's no guilt in non-judgmental awareness because it's pure present, present moment awareness. Um, but the way I get to that is not by choosing it. The way I get to that is by looking at what I'm choosing, looking at the fact that I'm choosing the ego and forgiving myself for it. That is the equivalent of... Um, when you do that, awareness is present in your mind. And in the beginning, that's going to feel somewhat neutral. Okay? But if you persist with it, if you persist with it, um, it's going to feel like peace. And um, and that was my experience because I came from having this anxiety just in my mind from the minute I woke up in the morning until last thing at night time. 
And so I threw myself into this practice. And after about two months, I remember saying to my husband, I think my anxiety is getting better because for the first time in eight years, there was a, there was a stillness in the back of my mind. Um, and, and I was only re reading there recently somewhere where Jesus was talking about, you know, being this stately calm and finding this calm center. And in it, he says, I won't go looking for it now because I may not find it straight away. I'm paraphrasing. But in it, he says, even when you forget that you are the stately calm and not the insane voice talking to itself, um, it will still be there. And that was my experience. Now, don't get me wrong. I spent a lot of my day in the cinema with Jesus. Um, I threw myself into the practice. Um, but even when I wasn't like aware of the Holy Spirit in my mind, I would just go, my God, there's a peace in the back of my mind. Now, look, at that probably wasn't any different than people who are normal, <laughs> normal egos. But for me, that was massive because I was coming from such noise in my head and anxiety and, and, and just a horrific um, experience in my head. Um, so so if you persist with it, then that... Um, that, that thing that feels so neutral in terms of this thing I could be if I'm not the insane voice talking to himself, it starts to shine as peace and it becomes, um, it becomes a joy. And then eventually at some point it reveals itself as love and that will blow your socks off when that happens. Um, it just certainly did mine. Um, and then something really and this is only something very recent in the last few months with me that's just sort of exploded and I've been writing about it in the group. But, you know, so what kind of happened after that was that I realized that, you know, we start off thinking I am the body. Um, and then the course says, well, no, you're not a body. <laughs> okay. Um, and so we accept that and we identify as what's in the cinema with Jesus or above the battleground with Jesus, a spirit rather than a body. And then what you realize is, well, the body is me, not, not Keith, right? The body's not Keith, um, but the body is awareness. The body is like consciousness. And so if I'm slipped into right-minded consciousness by being this non-judgmental observer, then suddenly what I realize is, well, the body is you know, it's consciousness. It's 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 been temporarily formed out of the formlessness of the mind of the Holy Son of God. Um, and then weird things happen, and and then it feels like the body is love, um, not because of the form of it, right? The form is the is the illusion, but but the formlessness out of which it's formed, it it has its being in a mind that's holy. If I'm looking at it from right minded consciousness. And then, and then you have experiences of seeing that the entire world is you as consciousness, um, not Keith. The entire world is consciousness. But if, I, if, I, if I've disidentified with the ego identity of Keith and I slip into this non-judgmental observer, this awareness, then the entire world is made out of me. Um, but the forms are nothing. <laughs> The forms are the lie, but the mind, the mind in which they have their being is holy. The screen on which the images are being projected is holy. The mind of God's son is holy. And what we did was we created a whole load of images of sickness and suffering and pain. And, and we did all of that so we could say to the Holy Spirit, you're wrong and I'm right. The separation is real guilt is real and so all, all we did was we made a whole lot of images on it and then we, we we made them real and we imagined ourselves in them but at any given moment you can notice they're just images and the minute you do that you see the holiness of the screen behind the screen of consciousness is it normal that um because I, I guess that was a I, long that was a long way of saying to you Lael, that you, you're going to have to take a leap of faith on this and trust that you're not the insane voice talking to itself in your mind. And if you take that leap of faith, and if you practice being in the cinema with Jesus, being the non-judgmental awareness of the insane voice talking to itself in your mind, that identity is going to start shining in your mind. It won't happen overnight. Well, I, I certainly do practice this a lot uh, because I'm pretty nutty and it helps me. Um, and... <clears throat> 
I have had moments of, I know the word bliss has been turned into a bad word by some, but anyway, I've had moments of what I would call bliss. And then what okay, kills and me. Bliss, bliss, is, bliss, is a mo bliss happens instantly. You disengage your identification with the insane voice talking to itself in your mind. Right. It's waiting so what for I want Waiting right. for you. Right, right. So I've had certainly had experiences of that. And what kind of amazes me is how far and quickly I can tumble down from that. It really feels like a tumble. It's almost like the bliss and the oneness allows things to be a certain way in the unreal world. Like suddenly, like, things just that are exactly what the Lael character would want to happen, happen. And then I get attached to it. The Lael character gets attached to it. And so then it disappears. I don't know if that's relatable. We probably don't have to go on and on, but. Um, no, well, yeah, no, just, I, I guess just to tie that down. Look, I mean, um, everything that's happening is a happening. They're just images we created, stories we created to cover over the holiness of Christ. Um, that's all that's happening in the dream. And the entire course is about letting go of your judgments of whether it's good or bad or right or wrong. So the problem isn't that we're dreaming. The problem is that we think parts of the dream are good and parts of the dream are bad. Instead of realizing it's just a dream. And if we do that, we see through all the images and we see the holiness of the one Christ behind them all. I, I, I am still identified enough with myself that I have definite preferences and I guess I can just keep yeah, but again, watching, all you, all watching, you have to do is let Jesus, watching myself. Yes, let, be with Jesus in the cinema and let him look at that with you. That's <laughs> okay. all you do. That's all you do. Thank and you if you do that, if you mm -hmm. do that, your other identity, your right minded identity is going to start to shine in your mind. You don't right. have to I think have, you don't have to have chosen against your ego. Yeah. So listen, uh -huh. all, all you, all, that's all you want to do is to have that experience in your mind. And you can have that experience in your mind most easily by looking at the fact that you're choosing to be an ego and forgiving yourself. Because instantly your right-minded identity is there. What, what makes it seem hard is that we're going looking for it. But the insane voice in your head can't find it. <laughs> um, you, you can only be it by looking at the insane voice in your head without trying to change it or fix it or fight it or judge it. Thank you for being kind to us amnesiacs who keep forgetting you <laughs> after the same thing no over problem. and over. Um, Thanks, Leo. Take care. Thank you. Right, loads of questions this week on the critical principle number one, but let's keep going. Uh, who should we go to next, Eli? We've got Gloria next. You can go ahead, Gloria. Okay, Gloria. Are you there, go ahead, Gloria? Gloria? Do you need to unmute yourself? No. Have we lost Gloria? It looks as though we have. So we have okay. Chaz. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, Chaz. Go for it. Hi. Um, really grateful for this group and for this interpretation of the course. It's really inspiring me and helping me. Um, um, so I just have a question about um, some of the things you've been saying in terms of what the self is and maybe mm -hmm. you could clarify what's metaphor and what's um uh because you're talking about you say things like um i am the awareness behind you know that watches the ego yeah and um we're identifying with um with that but like is is the awareness that's watching the christ no um, so we just so, we just say it's the self just to talk about it as a self concept, but it's not actually. Who okay, we are. so so w what we have is a true self, and then we have a right minded self, and then we have a wrong minded self. Now your true self is God. Okay, because in heaven, God and Christ are cause and effect, creator and created are one. There is just one mind in heaven. Uh, in the course, when Jesus is talking about the, the undoing of what never happened, he said that um, Christ disappears into God and God disappears into Christ. 
it's, it's a beautiful passage because he begins, you know, because he very much so teaches the course in the sense that, you know, there's all these separate minds. And sometimes he even says God created, you know, beings rather than being. Um, so he teaches the course in different ways. He doesn't frighten the life out of people who can't accept non-duality in the beginning. But in that passage, he says, no mind contains anything but God. OK, so this is where he begins tying things up. So, OK, let's imagine there's all these because this is imagined, right? But let's imagine there's all these minds that are waking up at different times and they're going back to God. Uh, and Jesus goes, no mind contains anything but God. So there's no individuality. There's no specialness. Um, there's no sense of me and God. No mind contains anything but God. Um, and then he really ties everything down when he says Christ disappears into God. God disappears into Christ. There is just one mind, one mind. That's the true self. So that's your true self. Um, now, um, within the dream of consciousness, where Christ can apparently be separate from God, but isn't, all right? God and Christ are one for all eternity. That's where you are now. That's the truth of it, is that you're God now. Um because there's nothing else to be in creation. There's just God extending God and the extensions of God extending God. Uh, and that's all that's going on right now. But there's a dream that seems to be happening. And with, you know, and that dream is that I can be something separate. I can be something special. I can be something individual. And that that's real. And that's the ego. However, there is also within consciousness that the memory that actually this is all made up and there's only oneness. And that's the Holy Spirit. So within consciousness, there's the wrong mind itself that goes separation's real. And there is, you know, consciousness is split between that ego and then the Holy Spirit that goes, don't mind that, that's not true. You can feel your oneness, despite the images. Um, so when I talk about being the right mind, being what's in the cinema with Jesus, that's your right-minded identity. And that's all you're asked to identify with. All you're asked to do is be right-minded consciousness. Because Jesus says that at the end, uh, consciousness is the last step in the journey and it's undone by God. In other words, he's making the point here that says you can't undo consciousness. Um all you can do is be right-minded consciousness. So the right mind will form the basis of our life in the real world. But even in the real world, that's not our true self. Um, it's our right-minded self. Uh, but, but once we have gotten to the real world and we've undone all our guilt and we've undone all our investment in being separate and we just feel the oneness of everything, um, well, then at that stage, what happens automatically is that consciousness is undone and then God is. So I, I, th I think the trick is understanding that there's a wrong minded self, there's a right minded self, and then there's a true self. But we, we don't, the true self is at the very end of the journey and it's automatic. Mm. So even in the, in the real world, nobody's going, oh, I think I'll un undo consciousness now. Because <laughs> um, mm -hmm. the, the very trying to undo consciousness preserves consciousness. So consciousness falls away as the illusion it is at the very, very end of the journey. So when we talk about the self you are in the cinema with Jesus, we're talking about your right-minded self, which is also an illusion. Um, but within the dream, it's the memory of truth. It's the memory of what you are in the dream and you identify with that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's really clear. Thank you. Um, I just want to see if there's something... Um... Because this, this, what you're saying about the world being me and I think I don't know if there's anything to it, but that was just really fascinating because I, I kind of it resonates with things I feel like I, I know, but I've never really heard before. Yeah, but. Um, uh, like, because I guess the, the thing is, like, I'm sort of wary of like maybe falling to this misidentification error about like thinking I'm consciousness, but then what you're saying is like that's not it's sort of out of the question because that'll be undone by god at the end and yeah and nobody's um, outside of consciousness no because jesus is quite clear even in chapter one that both the miracle and even revelation is experienced in consciousness really okay hmm. Hmm. yeah okay. so 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 we, we we don't want to start thinking that we can leave consciousness because we can't all mm -hmm. we can do is be right-minded consciousness yeah okay um, thank you so much no problem no problem yeah really helpful thank you
Okay, is that all the questions for now, Eli? We have one from Echo Charlie um, in the chat. He says, okay. I have had many spontaneous physical healings in my life. Course students tell me to shut up about it because that's not the way this works. Kate Greaves agrees with my viewpoint. Illness is bullshit. Who is right? Bodies are bullshit. Bodies are bullshit. So everything to do with a body is bullshit. Sickness, health, bullshit. Whole thing, bullshit. Good, so I, I love your you. answer. <laughs> so I agree with you there. The whole thing is bullshit. There's no bodies. Jesus says at no point in time does the body exist at all. And this is a course of understanding that you're not a body. You're free and you're still as God created you. And Jesus is quite clear that, you know, um, a sick body is no more real than a healthy body. They're both illusions. So we're either identified with an illusion or we're not. Um, yeah, that's what the course is about. <laughs> now, when you, um, you know, Jesus says the body doesn't need healing, but the mind that thinks it's a body is sick indeed. When you stop identifying as a body, then, you know, that may very well cause a spontaneous healing if that's in the Holy Spirit script. Um, great. But if you think that's important, your mind is still sick. Okay. So um, the extension of the miracle through us is none of our business. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Our job is to choose the miracle. And the miracle is I'm not an insane voice talking to itself and I'm not a body and neither is anyone else. That's the miracle. And what comes of that, the Holy Spirit will use for the best effect. So, you know, if that has been spontaneous healings for you, kudos, lovely. Um, but as soon as you think that's important, you're missing the point that you're not a body. So that's what I would say. But yes, all bullshit. <laughs> that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit calls bullshit on the whole of consciousness. <laughs> There's an image of a sick person. The Holy Spirit goes, that's bullshit. <laughs> There's an image of someone attacking someone else and the Holy Spirit goes, that's bullshit. Yeah, that's what the Holy Spirit is. A bullshit caller. Christ can't be a body, so Christ can't be sick. So Gloria has resurrected herself. Yes, Gloria. <laughs> Go ahead, Gloria. Hello. Hi. Hi, Gloria. Can you hear Go for me? It. Yeah. Hi. It's, it's so early. Thank you so much. I'm really nervous. Okay. So um, I am... I'm being attacked by the Antichrist, <laughs> which is me, no, you're which not. is an illusion. <laughs> well, and, and yes. no, so my father told me I don't know how to plan and I need a medical procedure and somebody gave him a few million dollars and he won't help me with his medical procedure because he said I'm a bad planner, which is basically like saying, I, I you know, where's your God now? Because my father, my whole life has never showed me love. And, and you answered my you answered my question, Keith, you said to, to, um, I don't, I feel love for my father. I also feel the temptation to, to not see him as the Christ, but he's, he is the Christ and I'm projecting that onto him. And, um, so I, I just hope the healing happens because it's very, for me, it's very frightening. My, my experience, you know, um, I go to work and, I'm trying to um, help bodies and I don't believe in, in this and, and I'm helping them, but then, then, then it, it's, it becomes very, I get very engaged in it because it's demanding of me and all of the experienced nurses are gone. All the doctors are, everybody's quitting. Here I am responsible for these people. And it's a dream. Yeah, but, but and let's, let, let, yeah, yeah, that's, let, let's, 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 yeah. I mean, listen, the, the one thing you do in the dream is you act normal. You're not asked to act yes, in a yes, holy I way. Am. And you're not, and you're not no. asked to pretend <laughs> that you don't believe in bodies because that's an unworthy form of denial. Right. But, and, yes. and you're not asked and you're not asked to stop being a nurse or stop being a doctor or anything like that. What you're asked to do is not take it seriously. That's all. Well, I so you, I don't take so it seriously. So you have a job. Pushes okay, me. but mm -hmm. no, no, nothing pushes us. There's no cause in the world. <laughs> You're tempted There's... to identify to get sucked in. Yeah. But, so, but that, but they, but you notice that and you forgive yourself for it. Um, and so, so you know, if you're a nurse, then all it means is that you are doing the best you can as a nurse without, without taking it seriously. 
you're in the cinema with Jesus, knowing the whole thing's made up. And, yeah. and the only purpose of your nursing is so it gives you a chance to join with your brothers. That's all. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's the only purpose yeah. it has. So you 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 know, in the dream, you fulfill your dream role. You just don't take it seriously. You do the best yeah. you can with it, but you don't take it seriously because you're in the cinema with Jesus knowing this is all made up. And all that's going on here is an opportunity to join with my brother. So my ego is going to go, here's my brother. He's different than me because he's really sick. And the Holy Spirit calls bullshit on that <laughs> and says, Christ isn't a body. All right. So you you stop yeah. thinking you're, st st undo the attack on Christ that you've made in yourself by identifying as a body. Step out of identifying with a body and the insane voice in your head and know your brother is this still alert presence of the Holy Spirit also. So the Holy Spirit in you sees the Holy Spirit in him. That's the purpose of your nursing. So you go ahead and do your nursing. And the real purpose of it is so that you can know you and your brother are one. That's okay. it. And if you're Thank a plumber, you. it's the same thing. And if you're an electrician, it's the same thing. And if you have a restaurant, it's the same thing. Go ahead and cook for people. Just don't take it seriously. And the only purpose of your customers being there is so you can undo the belief that you're separate and different from them. Make this year different by making it all the same. Uh, we all have an insane voice talking to itself in our mind, but we're actually the one Christ. And we have the shared purpose of awakening from the the dream of death, which is that I'm a body and an insane voice talking to itself, uh, to be the one Christ. And so that's what everything is about. Does that make sense? Well, my, yes, my, my father, I, I told my father that the only purpose in, of this world is to love one another. And, and um, he seems to think it's a special relationship and he tells me no. So he's basically telling me he has never been loving. I'm being, but I'm being loving now, but this is very confusing to me because I don't see his mind healing. So the sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself. The, the, yes. the thing that the thing that needs healing is your belief that he needs healing. He's Christ. I know he's, I know he, and I know he's a projection from my mind and I, I'm the one that needs the healing. So how do I, I just do nothing and wait patiently in silence. You, right you look at your body and the insane voice talking to itself. You see that on mm -hmm. the movie screen and you're with Jesus looking at it without judging it. Okay. And the you that is a non-judgmental awareness is also what your dad is. And yes. there is no Gloria or dad. <laughs> yes, I do. I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yes. there's, Thank you. there's Christ, there's Christ and there's a movie of victims and victimizers um, yes. that's playing that's playing across the holiness of Christ's mind and <laughs> yes, it and is. all we ever have to do is stop making the images real and focus on the mind of Christ which is already holy okay yeah. I'll work on that yeah. Thank you. And, and, and like I say, if, if we can get past the idea that someone needs to be changed or healed or fixed um, or judged or have, if we can get past that lie and we can align ourselves with what we are and know they are it, um, love expresses itself naturally through, through us. But again, we don't oh. want to be looking to see if someone someone changes their personality to see that healing works or that forgiveness works. That's the mistake. That's what we're talking about in this um, miracle principle number 10 that has dominated our meeting this week. Um, the use of miracles as spectacles to induce belief is a misunderstanding of their purpose. So if you're saying, oh, well, I'm doing this and my, you know, my dad's still an asshole, um, you need to read this miracle principle number 10 because you're looking for your dad to not be an asshole so you can believe that the miracle works. And that's that's what this one is warning us against. The only thing you have to do is heal your own mind. The only the sole purpose of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself, which says the separation never happened, bodies never happened. Okay, now, so I have to your stop whole, asking Your whole little... mind doesn't have to embrace that. If your whole mind embraces that, you're in the real world, you're home free, for right? Sure. You, you just yeah. have to hold that reality in your mind at the same time that there is an insane voice talking to itself in your mind, um, thinking there's me. So you just bring your the real mind thing... to your right mind. The only burning desire I have is to tell people the same thing, to love themselves. So that's what I'm doing wrong, right? I'm yeah, not, that's I'm what not you're doing myself. wrong. 
Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not see, loving myself. Yes, absolutely. See, because because you've you've you can't see that need in another unless it's first of all seen and denied in yourself. So oh. instead, instead, what? Because because yeah, what you're doing is you're trying to heal yourself vicariously by healing the world. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, so instead you gotta, thank you. Instead, you gotta understand that the only part of you that's not whole is the insane voice talking to itself in your mind. But the awareness yes. of the insane voice talking to itself in your mind is whole and holy and untouchable and invulnerable. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank that's you. What, Perfect. That's what the course wants to teach us. All I have to do is stop and just love myself. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> well, all, all you got to do is stop and identify with a thought of perfect love uh, in which glory disappears. Yes. Yeah. Because glory is I the problem. It. All your unhappiness yeah. is because you think you're Gloria. <laughs> oh, it's so true. Oh, my God. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Good. Thank you. All right, Chaz, we'll let you sneak in with another question. Make it snappy because I want to try and do another miracle principle before we wrap up. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering what the, like, a lot of what you teach about uh, involves just looking. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, like, where, what place do the forgiveness processes play in this? Like, for example, like, we already mentioned this, this the prayer, like, you are spirit, whole and innocent, all is forgiven and released. I think sometimes I rely too much on thinking about that and directing it to the other person. And maybe I'm not looking at my ego or withdrawing my projections. So I might be kind yeah. of bypassing a certain stage. Yeah. I mean, look, that's a wonderful thing to say, provided you have stopped identifying as a body yourself. Um, okay. Um, and again, you're not saying those words for God because God doesn't understand words because... <laughs> Because there's only one in heaven, so words would be kind of talking to yourself. <laughs> um, so, you know, Jesus says words were made to keep us separate. Um, so when, even though the, 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 the Course in Miracles has like, you know, it's quarter full with prayers to God, God doesn't hear prayers because there's only God. Um, but the, so the purpose of the prayers are for us. And in terms of, you know, by all means, like the, the sentiment of that, you know, you are spirit whole and perfect. The sentiment of that is great, uh, but you don't want to get latched into it as like magic words. Um, that's something you do with your voice or your body in the world or, you know, magic words that you say. You don't want to get into that trap. Right. Um, so so really um, the sentiment of that is perfect, but it would be much better if you could feel it rather than intellectualizing it with the insane voice talking to itself in your mind. And so what you want to do is get in touch with it in yourself. Because once you're in touch with it in yourself, then you know that what you are there. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank and you. so so really it's about in some way disidentifying with all the stories going on in your head, which are all bullshit. Um, and it doesn't mean you have to completely get rid of the voice in your head, but it means it means that you're not identifying with the voice in your head, even just for just for a few seconds. Um, that, and, and again, that's our practice of being in the cinema with Jesus, looking at the insane voice talking to itself and its body on the screen and not judging it, just being a witness to it. Okay. Um, and so we're really working towards a practice where we can fall back into being a non-judgmental awareness, a pure awareness in the present moment with no past learnings, just a pure present moment awareness right now. That's what we're practicing. Um, and, and when I feel myself as that, I'm going, that's what you are too. And okay, so the, res the result's the same. It's just you start with yourself first. Because I guess it's sometimes always yourself first. Yes, it's yeah. always yourself first. Because as soon as you've identified with a body, there is no way in hell you're going to forgive another body in the correct way. Yeah, like it would be forgiveness to destroy or something. It will be so. forgiveness to destroy because you're trying to forgive what actually happened. The mm -hmm. only way you can forgive what didn't happen, which is the course formula is by understanding that you're not a body and your brother and your brother is not a body. And nothing the body said or did means anything. 
So the only way you can forgive what never happened is to experience yourself as that to whom nothing has happened, which is a pure non-judgmental awareness in the present moment. So only the you in the cinema with Jesus can forgive what never happened because it's not the movie character. But as soon as you have left Jesus with the popcorn on his own in the cinema and popped into the movie screen, all you can do is try and forgive what did happen. And that's not the course's formula. Yes. So that would be forgiveness from cause when you're doing it with Jesus in the, at the mind level, right? Cause and not yeah, effect. Well, absolutely. What what yeah. does it what does it have? I mean, someone just assaulted me. I'm semi-conscious, but what does it have to do with the me that's in the cinema with Jesus? So again, we have two selves. And you're not asked to completely throw away your belief that you are the person that's just been assaulted. Um, but what you're asked to do is to have your right mind present at the same time to even as your body hurts and as you're coming in and out of consciousness um and as you have fear and adrenaline going on that there's a part of you in the cinema with jesus that's not affected by that this that's what forgiveness is that's how you bring the darkness to the light you don't fight the darkness you don't try and throw it away you don't try and get rid of it you bring it to the light so no matter what is going on with my body or other bodies or the world, um, I am with Jesus and a part of me is going, but what does it have to do with me that's with Jesus? That's happening to a body. That's okay. what the miracle is. That's what the forgiveness is. Mm, wow. again, yeah. Yeah. So that's the only way we can forgive what didn't happen. Okay, yeah, it's just so different than how I've approached it before, but it's really refreshing and, and helpful. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. All right, let's have a crack at another scene as we've I was out for dinner early with my mum for Mother's Day. So we're not under the same pressure to finish the usual. So let's do a little bit longer. Um so miracle principle number eleven. Prayer is the medium of miracles. It is a means of communication of the created with the creator. And through prayer, love is received. And through miracles, love is expressed. So for those of you that were with us in our journey through the song of prayer, you will no doubt be tired of hearing me saying that prayer has got nothing to do with talking to Jesus and God like they're Santa Claus to grant our ego wishes in a world that we have made to keep God out. <laughs> uh, rather, prayer is joining. Okay, so prayer is joining with the Holy Spirit. And in that joining, knowing all minds are joined. Because the one Holy Spirit is in all minds. The ego is legion. So there's a whole legion of insane voices talking to each other and bodies. But the Holy Spirit is one. The Holy Spirit in my mind is the Holy Spirit in your mind. Um, so through prayer, love is received and through miracles, love is expressed. And again, the minute I disidentify with the insane voice talking to itself, the minute I identify as what's with Jesus, the thought of perfect love, um, this witnessing, observing presence, this pure present moment awareness, the minute I step into that, love comes in and envelops me. And then that love expresses itself through me and there's no ego investment. I don't need anything that happens through me in order to feel good about myself. Um, I don't need anything that happens in order to feel like I'm a worthy person. This is the ego trap. Normally when the ego tries to help, all that's missing. And there is just the ability of love to express itself through me. I've gotten out of its way. This is a course in learning how to get out of love's way. Love is in your mind. It's called the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and it wants to extend itself to all minds. And this is a course on getting out of the way. How do you get out of the way? By stopping believing you're the insane voice talking to itself in your mind. Understanding that's a choice. You don't have to be the insane voice talking to itself in your mind. You're choosing it, but you don't have to be that. And everything the voice in your head is telling you is a lie. 
tells you you're a body, tells you you were born on a certain date, and it tells you that you're surrounded by other bodies, and that separateness is real, and that sickness is real, and that death is real, and the Holy Spirit goes, and that's all bullshit. So, you, you know, you have a holy mind. Once you step in and join with the Holy Spirit, you are right-minded consciousness. The mind of God's son is holy. And there are unholy pictures playing and they're not real. And so what we do is all our brothers who think they are the pictures, uh, we see them as the holy screen behind the picture. The idea beyond what can be touched, the light beyond the body, which is what I am. But I have to, first of all, connect with that in me, and then that extends. And what that means is it's what I see in you, and your mind is healed as a result of that. Now, when you accept that healing, that's between you and the Holy Spirit. That's none of my business. So really, again, we're saying if you're joined with the Holy Spirit, you see that you are already joined with all minds doesn't join you to all minds it reveals the fact that you're already joined with everyone is this just one holy spirit okay so prayer so it does not mean that prayer is praying for a body to be healed that's an attack on christ first of all i have attacked the christ in me to believe i'm a body and now i'm attacking christ again to see christ as a body in you to see you as a body and not only have I made the body real, now I'm going, and the problem, the problem is not in our minds, like the Holy Spirit says. The problem is in the world, it's in the body, and I'm going to fix that. Um, so that's not what prayer is. So prayer is joining with the Holy Spirit where you're not a body, and you see that your brother's not a body. And you're one. You're not separate. But I am, you are. Okay. Yeah, it's like um, on the subject of prayer, I've always loved what Ken said. He said, um, the only thing we should ever pray for is to know there's nothing to pray for. That's what the miracle is, knowing there's nothing to pray for. Actually, there's a coarse quote similar to that. Yeah. Um, the only meaningful prayer is for forgiveness, because those who have been forgiven have everything. So the only meaningful prayer is for me to stop believing the ego. And then I have everything. <laughs> Not an insane voice talking to itself in my mind. <laughs> That's the trade. <laughs> the minute I let go of the insane voice talking to itself in my mind, I have everything in the present moment, as a present moment awareness. Okay, so all we ever need is for a mind to be healed of making illusions real, um, and that our perception be changed from the ego's perception of separateness to the Holy Spirit's perception of oneness. So again, that says, um, Love is received and then expressed. So we feel the love of the Holy Spirit and allow it to extend through us. Now that we've gotten the insane voice out of the way and what it thinks it should do, which is all crap and wrong. Right. Um, would anyone like to ask a question on miracle principle number 11? We're good there, Eli? Sorry. Okay. Yes, it looks like we are. Good. Let's go with miracle principle number 12. Um, miracles are thoughts. Thoughts can represent the lower or bodily level of experience or the higher or spiritual level of experience. One makes the physical and the other creates the spiritual. This is a tricky little um, miracle principle because it's easy to confuse what it's saying. Um, okay, the first thing it's saying is miracles are thoughts. Miracles are thoughts because everything is a thought. Um, and a miracle is a shift from the ego's thought of separateness and guilt to the Holy Spirit's thought of unity 
shared purposes and forgiveness. Um, so miracles are thoughts. And the miracle is a corrective thought for the ego's thought of separateness. Um, now, okay. Thoughts can represent the lower or bodily level of experience or the higher spiritual level experience. One makes the physical and the other creates the spiritual. Now, it's not saying that the miracle is creative, right? The miracle happens within the dream of consciousness and there's no creation within consciousness. Creation is happening completely undisturbed by a tiny mad idea that never happened. Creation is continuing completely not one note in heaven sympathy was missed but there is no counterpart to um creation in the physical world of the body so this is not saying in this miracle principle because i know it looks a little bit confusing um it's not saying that the miracle has anything to do with creation um so really i guess you know the the ego makes and then the Holy Spirit undoes what the ego made. Um, so neither was anything to do with creation because both are illusions. Because not only is everything the ego made an illusion, um, but the correction for an illusion is still an illusion. So Jesus calls forgiveness the, the, last, the last illusion. Uh, it's the illusion that undoes all other illusions until it disappears itself as an illusion and there's just God's knowledge. Uh, which is a way of saying that the right mind is the correction for the wrong mind. And once the wrong mind is undone, the right mind as the correction for the wrong mind is undone. And then the decision maker consciousness no longer having a decision, um, the decision maker disappears and all that's left is the one mind of God and Christ as a oneness joined as one capital M mind. Okay, hope that makes sense. Um, I don't see any hands. Eli, are we good to keep going? Yes, it looks like it to me. Good. All right, let's do miracle principle number 13. God, this is a tricky one. <laughs> Probably should have quit when I was ahead. <laughs> okay, miracle principle 13. Miracles are both beginnings and endings, and so they alter the temporal order. They are always affirmations of rebirth, which seems to go back, but really go forwards. They undo the past and the present, and thus release the future. It's a bit of a tricky one to get your head around. So there's a quote in the Course, which says this nice and simply. Okay, I guess, first of all, in this principle, miracles are both beginnings and endings, and so they alter the temporal order. Uh, the reason a miracle is a beginning and an ending is because... Um, I have chosen to see you as guilty because of this thing you have done. So a miracle looks at the beginning and the end of this thing you have done and it says i will undo this i will undo my false perception around this period of time so that's why it's an ending and a beginning right um so we i mean what we have is guilt and the guilt's been like spread out into all the images um and so a miracle is just picking you know this thing you did um where i have projected all my guilt onto you and I'm going to like, you know, talk about this section of time. And this is where I'm going to want to do the guilt that's come up. So that's why it's a beginning and an ending. Um, now, but let's talk about the rest of this because I think this is really good. Okay. The ego invests heavily in the past. And in the end, believes that the past is the only aspect of time that is meaningful. Remember that its emphasis on guilt enables it to ensure its continuity by making the future like the past. I'm going to read this and go through it again afterwards. Um, and thus avoiding the present. 
by the notion of paying for the past in the future, the past becomes the determiner of the future, making them continuous without an intervening present. For the ego regards the present only as a brief transition to the future, in which it brings the past to the future by interpreting the present in past terms. Okay, let's break it down. Okay, the ego invests heavily in the past and in the end believes that the past is the only aspect of time that is meaningful. Remember that its emphasis on guilt enables it to ensure its continuity. Why does its emphasis on guilt enable it to um, continue its, ensure its continuity? Because the ego needs guilt to be real. If there's no guilt, there's no separation. The ego wants guilt to be real. That's why we made guilt. Um, because guilt is the proof that I have succeeded in separating from God. If there's no guilt, there's no ego. The ego absolutely needs guilt, but it shattered itself into quadrillions and quadrillions of pieces. So each piece could keep guilt real, but not have to see it in itself. It could see it in everything else. But we, but the ego needs guilt to be real. That's the proof I've succeeded in separating from God. If there's no guilt, there's no separation. Um, okay, so that's why the ego had such massive investment on, on guilt. Okay, so remember that its emphasis on guilt enables it to ensure its continuity by making the future like the past. So if the ego wants to continue, it needs to have the future like the past, full of guilt and the repercussions of guilt and the fear of the punishment for that guilt. Okay, and thus avoiding the present, sorry, and thus avoiding the present. So by the notion of paying for the past and the future, which is God's punishment, so we're into our triad, our unholy triad of sin, guilt, and fear. Sin happened in the past. Guilt is present now. And there is fear for the future because God's punishment is coming. All made up. Um, so by the notion of paying for the past in the future, the past becomes the determiner of the future, making them continuous without the intervening present. Jesus says the only aspect of time that um, resembles eternity is now. Okay, but we're never in the now. And this is the point he's making here. The ego is just pushing the guilt of the past into the future and having fear about the repercussions there. So it's all about the continuity of guilt. Um, okay. But the ego regards the present only as a brief transition to the future in which it brings the past guilt to the future by interpreting the present in past tense. So Jesus tells us, I see only the past. Okay, so what the miracle principle is saying is that um, in the present moment, the miracle abolishes the past. So it seems to go backwards because uh, it abolishes the past in the present. And by doing that, it frees the future. So now there's no more fear. If the sin in the past is abolished in the present, then the fear of the future is gone. Um, I could wake up in the morning <clears throat> and I could suddenly feel really depressed and bad about myself. And instantly into my mind comes a memory of something that happened when I was a kid. And I go, that's really messed me up. And look at, I'm still feeling the repercussions of that. Okay, all bullshit. In the present moment, I chose to be a body and an insane voice talking to itself. The guilt of separateness was waiting for me. And I looked into the past and picked something to blame for how crap separateness is. That's what actually goes on. 
All right. Um, so, um, so what we want to do is with the miracle, we want to abolish guilt in the past, um, experience guiltlessness in the in, in the present, and the fear then in the future is gone. Um, is there anything else we can say about that principle? I know it's a little tricky. So we want to undo the past in the present and release the future. Yeah, what I wanted to say was, it, it's like we've been talking about all through the meeting, is that when you're in the cinema with Jesus, you are a pure present moment awareness. You're a witnessing presence. You're an observing presence. The decision maker joins with the Holy Spirit as a non-judgmental observer. That's a pure present moment awareness. And that... Um, that's what the ego wants to avoid. That's why the ego wants to push the guilt of the past and just have the present moment be a, you know, a brief transitionary period so that all that guilt is pushed into the future as fear. So that so death to the ego is if we discover that it's all about the present moment. It's all about being a present moment awareness. Um, as a present moment awareness, I have no problems. <laughs> Um, it's only when I attack the Christ in me to identify as a separate self. Now there's all kinds of like trauma and everything else that I'll believe in. Um, but that pure present moment awareness, the me that's in the cinema with Jesus is never traumatized. The me that's in the cinema with Jesus is only ever peaceful. Because in the present moment, there's only peace. Well, I hope that makes sense. And we do have a question with Angela. So we'll take Angela's question and then we'll draw a line under things. Is that okay with you, Eli? We're not missing out on anything? Well, yes, but there is something in the chat that I thought okay. I would bring up towards the Perfect. end. So no can problem. Let Angela we'll do Angela ahead. first and then we'll tie up the chat. So Angela, what would you like to ask about? Unmute yourself. There you go. Hi, Keith. Hi, Angela. Um, so just to add to what you said, this is really a question, but what was coming to my mind is many times I couldn't get over uh, guilt of the past. And um, I didn't know how, I guess in practicality, what I would do is forgive myself for the information that I had at that time that I believe that did happen. And so it kind of ties into what you said with this separateness of, you okay. know. And that's that's a wonderful place to begin if we've never tried to forgive ourselves before. Um, but we need to call a spade a spade and go, that's not what the course is teaching because that's forgiveness to destroy. You're forgiving yourself for what you did. And the course formula is you forgive yourself for what you haven't done. So that would be forgiveness to destroy. And this is I'm, this is kind of what I want to sort of write a few posts on this week is to really drill into this forgiveness to destroy because it's so insidious, um, you know, because I'll catch myself and, you know, my mum can be like really impatient when she's explaining things. And if you ask any questions, she bites your head off. And, <laughs> um, and, and I've noticed myself going, yeah, but people just get more impatient as they get older. And then I and then I've I've realized that's forgiveness to destroy. I've made it real. And now I'm looking for a way to pretend I'm going to forgive it. Um, and in the same way, Angela, what you've done is you you're saying, Well, I did that, but let me find a way of forgiving myself for it. Actually, you didn't do it because you're not the body, and you're not anything the body has ever done, and you're not anything the body has ever said or thought. <laughs> Or any of it. Yeah, I know we're getting on for time, but we got to read my my probably my favorite quote from the course. Um, ah, this is a long one, but let's do it. Okay. Why would you not be overjoyed to be assured that all the evil you think you did was never done?
that all your sins are nothing. That you are as pure and holy as you were created. And that light and joy and peace abide in you. Your image of yourself, that's your body and this crazy voice talking to itself. Um, your image of yourself cannot withstand the will of God. You think that this is death. Yes, we all think it's death to let go of the voice in our head and its grievances um, and the body. You think that this is death, but it is life. You think you are destroyed, but you're saved. The self you made is not the son of God. Therefore, this self does not exist at all. And anything it seems to do and think means nothing. It is neither good nor bad. It is unreal and nothing more than that. It does not battle with the Son of God, what you really are. It does not hurt him nor attack his peace. It has not changed creation nor reduced eternal sinlessness to sin and love to hate. What power can this self you made possess when it would contradict the will of God? Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Over and over, this must be repeated until it is accepted because it's true. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Nothing can touch it or change what God created as eternal. The self you made evil and full of sin is meaningless. Your body and what it does and says and thinks, meaningless. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God and light and joy and peace abide in you. Salvation requires the acceptance of but one thought. You are as God created you, not what you made of yourself. Whatever evil you may think you did, you are as God created you. Whatever mistakes you made, the truth about you is unchanged. Creation is eternal and unalterable. Your sinless is guaranteed by God. You are and will forever be exactly as you are created. Light and joy and peace abide in you because God put them there. So, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, so the only problem you have is that you think you are a body and an insane voice talking to itself, and therefore you think that you have sinned and made mistakes and done harm. None of it's true. So the only problem we have is the mistaken decision to separate from the Holy Spirit, which is realizing I'm not a body or an insane voice separate talking to itself and and in that to know that I am not separate from any of my brothers we are one we have one identity as Christ which is holy so the only problem we ever have to address when we talk about forgiving ourselves is the idea that we are the insane voice talking to itself so again we slip back into the cinema with Jesus where we are a pure present moment awareness a present moment awareness isn't informed by the past because there is no past it's a movie and so really in a practical terms, what you want to do is you want to be in the cinema with Jesus, feeling yourself as a pure present moment awareness, looking at the guilt without the story you're attaching to it. Because you're saying the guilt is there because of something I did in the past. No, the guilt is there because you're choosing to be a separate self. And now you're picking a story to blame for why being a separate self is crap. Does that make sense? Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah. So again, we're only asked um, to look at the problem the way it is rather than the way we're setting it up. And the only problem is that we've thrown the Holy Spirit out of our minds in order to identify as an insane voice talking to itself and its body. And then we will pick things in the movie and go, you did this to me. But, but the only reason we're upset about anything is because we've chosen the wrong teacher because we're identified with the wrong self. 
So when we look at the past and go, well, I only did that because that's forgiveness to destroy. And, you know, with the best of intentions, if I'm going, well, my mom's just a little bit irritable because she's getting older, forgiveness to destroy. Um, the self you made is not the son of God. Nothing it says or does or thinks means anything. It is unreal. Nothing more than that. It is an image. And behind that image is the shining radiance of Christ. Whose innocence is guaranteed by God. Does that make sense, Angela? Yes, very much so. Thank you. Brilliant. Very, so what, <laughs> what shall we wrap up with, Eli? Okay, in the chat. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> your bell rang. Pi is being picked up. <laughs> Sparkle gets her say. Okay, in, uh, Samuel in the chat as a question. He has said, I never understood why Keith says to continue to choose the eagle. Guess he's looking for an explanation of that. Yeah, but you think you're a body and an insane voice talking to itself. You're already choosing the ego. So the course is not saying stop choosing the ego. If you could do that, well, you'd be in the real world. Um, and so the course is not saying that you stop, you know, that you choose against the ego and choose the Holy Spirit. If you think that, you're going to do a massive guilt trip on yourself that you can't do it. You know, again, to use our example, someone comes up and they assault you and knock you to the ground and they rob you. Um, you know, what use is it for me to say to you, Samuel, stop choosing to be the ego? <laughs> OK, it's because, you, you know, if you could do that, well, then suddenly be completely peaceful. How likely is that to happen? Very unlikely. Uh, and Jesus is no fool. So that's not the way he teaches the course. <laughs> he says, look at the fact that you're choosing to be ego and don't judge yourself. Be with me. Be with me looking at the fact that you're choosing the ego. Um, and don't judge yourself for it. And that's what the course is about. <laughs> it's looking at the fact that you're choosing the darkness. But you have to look at it. You have to look at the problem the way it is and not the way your ego is setting it up. Even if I have been insulted and knocked to the ground and I've been robbed, there is only one problem, which is the fact that I'm identifying with the insane voice talking to itself in my mind. That's the only reason I'm upset. Now I can blame the assault, uh, but that's not the reason why I'm upset. Um, and so what the course is teaching us is that all of your unhappiness comes from thinking and identifying and choosing to be the voice in your head. All your unhappiness. And you don't have to keep choosing it. But the resistance, the resistance to not being the voice in your head is massive, Samuel. You know, if you can suddenly choose no identification with the voice in your head anymore and to be a pure present moment awareness, uh, you knock yourself out. Um, in the case that you can't do that, like the rest of us, um, what you do is you you look at the fact that you are choosing the ego and you don't judge yourself for it. And if you do that, what that's looking is going to do is it's going to reduce your fear of not being the separate self. And it's going to undo your guilt about being the separate self. And then there's less need to be a separate self. And so this looking is the whole, the whole of the course. You look at your choice for the ego without judging yourself. You join with Jesus or the Holy Spirit as a symbol of perfect love. You identify with that perfect love in your mind. Um, and you are the right mind looking at the thoroughly insane part of you that wants to identify with a script that's playing in your mind of a movie character with a voice in his head and a body in the world. But you're only asked to bring your wrong mind to your right mind. You're only asked to look at what you're choosing until, until you don't want it anymore. So we're not saying that you choose the ego forever. 
we're saying we, you acknowledge the truth that you are choosing to be the ego. And as long as you know that and can see that, at least you know it's a choice. That's what the miracle shows you. The secret of salvation is but this. You are doing this unto yourself. And if you're doing it unto yourself, you can stop doing it unto yourself. But there's too much fear to do that all at once. And so the course formula is, how do you let go of your ego and your guilt? You look at how much you don't want to let go and you forgive yourself for it. And that will undo it. And it's inevitable that you will choose against the ego and join with what's looking at the ego with Jesus. And we do that one situation at a time. But this is not a course in sacrifice. This is a course in relinquishing the valueless. So you look at your decision for the ego and the mileage you still think you can get out of it in a situation. Um, and you do that with Jesus and you forgive yourself for what you're doing until you don't want it anymore. The looking with Jesus will establish that you don't want it anymore because if you're with Jesus looking at your choice for the ego, Jesus in your mind is going to start to shine. It may start off as an idea, a leap of faith, a hope, a nebulous gray concept, but it will shine if you just let Jesus, the Holy Spirit, into your mind and identify as a thought of perfect love and know that is what you are, even though you're not ready to let your ego go yet. And you just look at the fact that you're choosing the ego, but you're, you have Jesus with you. Um, that love in your mind is going to start shining. So that's how we practice the course. Right. So um guys thanks a million for your attention and um we shall do it all again next week have a have a brilliant week and we'll see you in the group thank you so much keith good to see everybody bye now thanks keith thanks bye everyone. keith thank you thanks everybody thank, thank you keith. Keith. thank you thanks everyone